There's a great deal of emphasis today being placed on self-esteem. Self-esteem has been a rampant emphasis in the world for a long time. I'd say over 60 years, it has really been pushed trying to build up people's self-esteem that they will feel good about themselves. But I like to look at this in light of a Christian perspective, in light of the Word of God and what he has to say about it. As I see it, self-esteem applies in Christianity two ways. The first way that it would apply is how we reach out to others, how we are reaching to the lost to turn them towards salvation in Jesus Christ. And so this is, this is an issue. But the second way is as it pertains to Christian living. After the person has come to the Lord, how do they feel about themselves? How do they feel about others? This is something important to look at. So when we're looking at the first one, as it pertains to salvation, we have to consider that men are in a fallen state. According to Scripture, according to Scripture, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Jesus said there are none good but God. He is the only one. We know that all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. That's from Isaiah 64, 6. And I would just at this moment urge you to look in the description for applying scriptures and for a link to a couple items. One is a video from Paul Washer on self-esteem and one is a blog that I had done earlier. Uh, it tends to pertain toward the prosperity gospel, but I really believe self-esteem is a key part of the prosperity gospel. It's about feeling good about ourselves. So when we see men's fallen state, we have to accept the way God sees us. And this is how we need to present it to the world. We see from like Romans 5, 8, that God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There seems to be a problem today with people admitting that they are sinners, that they are bad enough that they will be separated from God and cast into hell. Of course, nobody likes the idea of that. But the flip side of that is God isn't asking us to be good enough. He's saying that we can't be. And so Jesus took the punishment for us. When we see again words from Jesus, when he said, he has not come to the call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. But if you know that the Lord has said that there are none righteous, what he's really saying here is that unless you accept the fact that you are in sin, separated from God, you cannot be called to repentance. It's like you have to be convinced of your disease before you will take the cure for it. So he has come to call sinners to repentance. He's hoping that all men would see their need for this. And that is what we need. We need to repent, turn from our sins, ask for forgiveness for, Je for, for Jesus' sake, and accept his sacrifice on the cross for our sins. He bore the wrath of God in our place. That is, repent and remit. This is what Jesus said in Luke 24, 47, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among the nations. And of course, finally, in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace it is that you have been, it's, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So again, even here, we are seeing our condition before God. It is not good, and we need to come to that understanding. Now, as far as Christian living goes, obviously the message of the word is humility. We see humility. We see, such as in James chapter 4, verses 6 through 10, we see that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You know, one of the problems with self-esteem, if you're looking for this, it, it delves into other areas. One is pride. And you know how poorly the Bible speaks on pride over and over again. Pride goes before the fall. And God is against those that have a haughty spirit. And so he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. We see this in multiple scriptures throughout, uh, throughout his word. And in particular in the New Testament and Proverbs. Again, I have scriptures listed here for you. We see that an important part of Christian living is self-denial. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. This is what Jesus said. Take up the cross daily. 
So what does he mean by this? This is not self-esteem. This is not promoting your own good ways. You have to deny yourself rather than affirm yourself. You will read it again from Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Paul was talking about all the good things that he had done as a Pharisee, all the qualities, the qualifications that he had, but he said he counted them as dumb so that he may gain Christ. He put them all aside. He crucified them because there is nothing, nothing of ourselves that is of any good before God. We need the goodness of Jesus Christ in our lives. I think one of the most powerful scriptures we could look at as believers and for Christian living comes from Romans chapter 7. Probably many of you are familiar with this. But it starts out here in verse 18, just says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would do, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Later he says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. I see a law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Of course, then he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So you see that really there is nothing good in our flesh. And we are continually dependent upon God all of our lives. We stand in the righteousness of Christ. We minister in his power. This is why he's given us the Holy Spirit. This is how we must approach it with a humble heart. And I only wanted to say, in terms of self-esteem, even here in Romans uh, chapter 8, which is right adjoining to 7, of course, we see what might be a little self-esteem for the believer, how we should look at it. Who shall lay anything in the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. And so we can see this is, this is our esteem. Our self-esteem, our self-justification comes from Jesus. It comes from the sacrifice that he made on the cross. It's a very important thing to consider. And I just had to go through quick and, and count this. You know, Jesus referred to himself in the Gospels as the Son of Man, which is a term of humility. This is the God who created man. And he refers to himself as the Son of Man. I counted, going quickly through, uh, through the concordance, 67 times that Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's the type of humility that Jesus was telling us that we ought to have. Okay. Finally, I just want to address this. You see, the Lord does address how it is in his word regarding self-esteem. He says that every way of a man is right in his own eyes. You see, we already have self-esteem. All our ways are right in our own eyes. Ephesians 5.29, there is no man that hates his flesh. We cherish our flesh. So there is none that truly hates his flesh, but we serve ourselves all of our day. Philippians 2.21 says that no man seeks the things that are Christ, but every man seeks after his own. So you can see by nature, by nature, we serve ourselves and we already have self-esteem. This is something that ought to be broken when we see ourselves in truth, the way God sees us. To us, you know, sin is kind of a light thing. Everybody makes mistakes. We can always find someone worse than we are. There are always, there's always a way to justify ourselves. But sin is very serious to God. And he cannot, he cannot tolerate it tolerated at all. And this is why Jesus needed to come to be the sacrifice for our sins. But probably when you look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5, this is a prophecy of the last days. It says that in the last days that perilous times will come, that is dangerous times will come. Why? Because men will be lovers of their own selves. This is the overriding condition. 
They have great self-esteem. They love their own selves. And look at the qualities that go with it. I'll just list a few. I think I actually counted, including love, love of the self, I think I counted 18 in this section, that they are covetous. Men are covetous. They boast. They are proud. They are fierce for their own ways. They are unthankful. This is a part of self-esteem, you see. If we are good people, what did we need Jesus for to die on the cross, right? We're unthankful for the true sacrifice that was given for our souls. And I do see people that just uh, epitomize this. They don't even know it, but Satan has them deceived. Uh, they despise good people. Yes, they despise those who might talk about humility, right? I won't get into that. We've had some experiences with that. And they love pleasure more than they are lovers of God. Again, these things are not the way we should be witnessing to the world. We should not be telling them they have things to boast of. We should not be making them proud. You see, we're starting to emphasize in that way works rather than grace. And you know that it is by grace we have been saved and not through works. It is the gift of God. So when we start promoting self-esteem, it is a promotion of works over grace. It also is a promotion of pride. It also is a promotion of flattery. How do people get pride? How do people get self-esteem? We are flattering them with our tongues, and a flattering tongue works ruin, says the word. So please, I hope you will consider this. People need to come to the Lord in truth. It's not that we are putting them down. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Isn't that a comfort for someone to know? Not that you're trying to lift them up to an unholy, lying, false place with God, but to say, no, God reached to you where you are. No, he doesn't want you to remain in sin, but he knows that you're trapped and he did this for your salvation. Let's tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. They will be saved in truth, if at all. Let's not build them up in themselves, because that will only lead them to destruction. May God bless you.